Hey, CJLHD here. My name's Casey, and I am about to impart on a journey up to the Upper Peninsula in the middle of winter here. Uh, a lot of friends recently have been asking me how electric vehicles handle in the winter, so I thought why not uh, do a little video vlog and kind of showcase the, the adventure. So we're going to go up there for Michigan Tech's Winter Carnival and do a little skiing at Mount Bohemia and who knows what else. So come along with me and let's do this. Day one of this trip, I'm actually staying overnight in Traverse City. Before I hit the road, I'm quick charging my car at my house from 80 to 100%, which costs a buck or two. The metrology company I work for is doing calibrations of electronic sensors used in heat treating applications at an aerospace facility. The company that I'm working for pays my per diem and the hotel that I'm staying at just happens to have a Tesla overnight charger. So basically recouping all of my energy costs for free while driving up here. So currently Mackinac City to Marquette, Michigan is gonna be the longest stretch of roadway that I'm gonna have without a supercharger. I have heavy 20 inch rims with snow tires on and it's obviously not the most efficient setup. I can get pretty cool shots with this Insta360 on a big 10 foot long selfie stick that stitches out the stick so it looks like a drone's following my car. I'm gonna have a little bit of range anxiety so I'm fully charging at the bridge to 100%. One of the best parts about driving this car is that I have the FSD beta package on it. I was an early FSD beta tester when it first came out for Navigate on City Streets and it honestly just makes this car just like a dream for road tripping. Super comfortable, you know, you can pretty much have it take over for all the long lengths of drive. It's really cool seeing how much it's progressed since it first came out. And you can see here, it just handles roundabouts and no problem at all where it was, you know, had kind of had a hard time in the early days, but it's just cool to be a part of the future of autonomous driving and seeing every step of the way, every iteration of software updates that come to this car, how much it improves over time. I'm gonna be spending the night at my friend's house. I'm not preconditioning my battery and I arrived with 23%. I really worried for nothing. Had to cap off that long drive with a nice brew at Ordock Brewing Company. And since there are no public level two chargers I can use overnight, I'm having to spend about 17 bucks. So I'm staying in Marquette where my best friend, Brendan B Money McLaughlin and his partner Lauren are putting me out for the day. And he wants to take me out to Marquette Mountain, which I've actually never been to before. So it's time to get in the first ski of the year. Let's go. I joke that this guy is the mayor of Marquette because you can't go anywhere without him seeing somebody that he knows. He's literally the best person to bump into in Marquette. And I'm so jealous he gets to live up here year round. Nothing better than a bloody on a sunny day on the slopes. All right, without further ado, we gotta hit the road up to the Keweenaw. Thank you so much, Biman and Lauren, for giving me a very cozy couch to sleep on. We're gonna charge up the car again at the supercharger and let it rip. There's something magical about getting into the copper country. We're pulling in late at night. The very first thing you're greeted to is the broom ball tournaments. We're here at Michigan Tech's all nighter, day one of the winter carnival. Broom ball is just a crazy sport. It's obviously kind of like hockey, but you do not have skates on. You are wearing boots on sheer slick ice. And check it out, people go absolutely nuts over it. It's just an incredible way as a student to join an intramural sport out here and just relax from the hardships of your classes and just unwind. As we progress throughout the night, all over campus, people are just drinking and having a good time, partying, dancing nonstop, eating pancakes to stay warm until the sun comes up. And students everywhere are building ice sculptures all over campus. It's just so awesome to see. Being that I'm in my mid-30s now, I just can't keep up with these kids. And I got a call her a night early. It was a long day. In the morning, I was greeted to some Pigeon Hill and some biscuits and gravy from none other than soon-to-be Dr. John Scab. This guy's still up here working on his PhD in chemical engineering right now. He was one of the best friends I made when I was up here, and he is one hell of a fishing buddy. We went back to campus to check out some more broom ball, 
and obviously check out some of the ice sculptures that were made. Michigan Tech was one of the most influential moments in my life and just every time I get to come back up here just reminds me of all the fun I had when I lived up here for three years to complete my bachelor's degree in math and physics. Oh, what a save Zamedes! The cities of Hancock and Houghton is just breathtaking. Everywhere you go is just friendly people. The culture of copper mining is just prevalent everywhere, which obviously, if you think about it, the copper that was mined here in the Keweenaw is what lit New York City up when electricity first started coming out. Where Edison, Westinghouse, Tesla, design their AC and DC circuit wars. So being an EV driver makes me appreciate this area just a little bit more. I did a quick stop through Dollar Bay where I used to live when I lived up here. And yeah, that's a car under that snowbank. That used to be my car almost every winter day going to school. But now we gotta get to business. One of the real reasons I came up here, Mount Bohemia. So we gotta travel up the Keweenaw Peninsula. We're heading up north to Lac La Belle, Michigan. I gotta give a shout out to Darren McCleskey who I used a little bit of his electricity up there at his place in Amik and charged me up good enough to get on up. This is I think my fifth season being a season pass holder up here and man, it never gets any easier being. <laughs> it is very skilled terrain up here. Definitely the best place to ski in all of Michigan for sure. Maybe the entire Midwest, right? After a bunch of runs, you take a dip in their heated pool. Oh, it's perfect. Then back on the slopes again. I didn't even know how to ski when I first moved up to the UP. So it was awesome that Michigan Tech has free students skiing across the Portage Canal at Mount Ripley. I spent so much time there since it was on my way home every day. And gosh, the views of Lac La Belle and Lake Superior are just incredible. So after skiing, John talked me into driving all the way around the Keweenaw Bay to Skaney where him and his buddy Richie were set up late at night for some burbot fishing. This had to be one of the coldest times I've ever ice fished before. But man, if Dr. John tells you to come fishing with him, this guy is the burbot slayer. After a long night of fishing, my friends Ted and Carla Uyvar generously put me up in their house in Houghton. And of course they let me charge on their level two charging in their garage overnight. What awesome people. I met back up with John, and of course, since he's doing his PhD in lithium battery recycling, I've got to let him do a little research on an electric vehicle, right? Yeah, I think he had fun. We quick went back to campus to get ready to go to the hockey game. Michigan Tech's playing Bowling Green tonight, and the students are getting rowdy. The MAC is one of the most incredible arenas in all of college hockey. When I was looking for a university to go to, I definitely had to go to a school with a D1 hockey team. And man, Michigan Tech did not disappoint. Some of the most excellent hockey games I've ever been to were in this arena. And it's just so awesome to root for these Husky dogs. And it just goes absolutely nuts when the boys score. The camaraderie between the students and the hockey game is second to none. You just feel like one big team out there rooting for your squad. After the game, my old boss invited me over his place, which is a breathtaking view in Hancock, Michigan, for some dinner. I love Keith and Pam like they're my own family. This was my first trip up here since Houghton finally got some DC fast chargers. Shout out to Dr. Carl Bloss for letting me borrow his Chatamo adapter. It let me pull 50 kilowatts off these things. And what do you know, winter carnival fireworks going off just as my battery is about to top off. How poetic. It's looking like I'm going to be able to do this whole trip in under $100. All right, arriving back in Marquette, I know I have to make that long stretch again. So I'm going to supercharge back up close to 100%. But this time I have to precondition my battery. So I'm definitely going to be arriving under 20%. You can see here now, these long supercharging stops are quite expensive. They're not really much cheaper than gasoline would be to fully fuel up the car. But thankfully on this trip, I'm able to keep my supercharging down to a minimum to keep the cost down. And I ended up finally arriving with only 3%. So that was a little scary. My car started preconditioning the battery a little too early, which means that it heats it up so that it can accept electricity faster. And it started doing this quite soon into this trip. And I did start to get worried because I was projected to get in and under 10%. There were a few level two options in between, but that would have added a lot more time to this drive. I also could have purposely not preconditioned the battery and been safe too. 
One more long supercharge in Mackinac City and again in Cadillac will round up all the electricity I need to make it back home. And you can see I used just a little bit over a half of a megawatt in electricity on the whole entire trip. Being a math nerd, I can really appreciate all the statistics this car shows. From calculating and optimizing your trips, letting you know exactly how long you need to be on a charger for until you can make it to your next destination, it plans out your entire trip completely optimized. Arriving back in Muskegon with just under 1400 miles. Since a good chunk of the charging was done while I slept at my destinations, I really didn't spend that much extra time on this trip. It maybe added mm, about an hour and a half each way overall. What an awesome trip. Who says you can't drive an electric vehicle up to the UP in the middle of winter? Well, hey, I really appreciate you watching this video. It's been a while since I got all artsy fartsy and put together a video vlog. If you have any questions about electric vehicle ownership or what it's like making the switch away from gasoline, hit me up. I love talking about it, obviously. Oh, and be sure to check out the Tesla Summer Meetup. It's an event I help organize with the Tesla Owners Club of Michigan. It's the largest Tesla gathering in the Midwest, and it is one heck of a day. You definitely don't want to miss out. I'll put the RSVP link in the description. Events like this, you meet people from all over the world that work in every industry you could imagine. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is CJL HD out.